So let's start off by addressing the elephant in the room. Every Local Chronicles episode starts off with a poll on Twitter, and this week I did not uphold my end of the deal. Yes, Altergeist won the poll, but after sleeping up the deck and taking into Locals, playing a few rounds before Locals started, I realized the deck needed so much more work and I don't want to go five rounds suffering with a horrible deck. So I played Branded. But I got a lot of good suggestions for a punishment for me not upholding my end of the poll. And without eating any cards or playing flu next week, I'm just going to give away a few beautiful Sleeve Chief oversleeves to you guys. So comment down below what deck you want me to play next week and you can have a chance of winning these beautiful border sleeves. I'll announce the winners next week on Twitter. So yeah, we got a lot of branded post-Infinite Forbidden gameplay against the strongest meta decks this week. Beautiful gameplay, great opponents, and make sure to stay respectful in the comments because my opponents can read too. So enjoy this episode 6 of Local Chronicles going into the first round versus Labyrinth. So we win the die roll, but we don't actually know what we're playing against. So we have full combo and we're making a big bad board. We don't have an Albez Grave which is kind of problematic and we don't have a dark for Lubellion besides the ones we have in Grave. And that's the problem with starting with Quem and Cartesia. Sometimes you lack an Albaz or a dark monster, but it still doesn't really matter because we managed to make a full board. We don't ever go into the puppet line uh, automatically. We set a duplication from hand and set branded banishment because we're playing Dragon Lord, which is really good against Labyrinth. We finally see what our opponent is on and we have a duality that grabs freezing curses or actually flashing fire and of course set five which is always good end phase we start clearing up the board we target the branded fusion and dump two dark dragons to make a uh, borrowed furious dragon to pop one we manage to pop one we pop another one in the end phase and we start attacking just to force out some trap daruma doesn't really do anything to branded we managed to keep our mirror jade before attacking so it will be available for us and we have a big welcome or rather a welcome labyrinth on the board now that our opponent is basically on one card we get the dragon lord and since they have one card versus three omni negates it's scoopage with a full board so dragon lord really pulling in some weight now next turn our opponent starts sets five with uh sets four with an ariana we go ahead and start trying to break the board and normal summon Alubur, and our opponent doesn't ha really have a response, but Tarantra Tribute is answered, and we chain Cartesia to make sure our Quiridus can trigger its effect. That way we also get a Quem on board. Now the Mirror Jade has been removed by card effect, we can summon a Despia monster or a Fallen of Albaz from the deck. So of course we want to get some extension with Quiridus summoning the... Quem. We decide on what to add with Alubur, and uh, it's going to be Branded Lost, and we get Quem. Quem dumps Branded Retribution, and now Branded Lost, Branded Fusion, and we are met with a Deep Barrier, which we cannot do anything about. Could have played a bit better, maybe grabbing a Branded in Red to play the long game. We do have Thrust now. Now, Thrust, I think this was a misplay, grabbing Feather Duster, because everything is chainable anyway. I think grabbing Fusion Duplication for the next turn, so we can get to fusion summoning and with branded lost it's gonna be much better but it probably wouldn't have mattered because lovely could just pop the set he already had big welcome now he has welcome next turn goes on and of course lovely is able to reset the dimensional barrier it's always rough to get to a point where labyrinth has the right silver bullet in the grave with lovely that can just recycle it every turn and against brand it's very effective because basically you just can't play and they have momentum and that's a momentum based deck so this is the game three hand we obviously lose game two very bad hand that loses to one imperm but we don't get impermed we're able to make a solid line definitely not the best we have to discard cards that we really want and we just go for a dragon lord setup right we did draw the blazing branded king which is nice we said banishment because it's actually very good regardless of dragon lord and uh, we have duality, evenly matched in the battle phase, negated by Blazing Branded King, set, four, and pass. Now we have the Welcome Labyrinth to summon the Lady. Now it's it gets a bit trickier. Um, we obviously are met with another D-Barrier on the effect of um, the Mirror Jade here. 
which is not only bad because it's it obviously screws up the mirror jade play but it's also bad because we don't get any graveyard effects we obviously can't summon and again now it's all about momentum right and we have the chain lady of course to set another trap from the deck they try to bounce with big welcome we chain as cost because that's a possibility and of course we are met with a second d barrier to which we chain fusion duplication just to get some bodies then we chain branded banishment to which they chain the dogwood just before time and we have to chain a bestial <laughs> on our own alveon to make sure they don't gain so many life points because it summons then summons another one it's like 5,000 life points and we kind of ra running out of resources we have another set d barrier basically it's just a game of tempo um this is the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. we're obviously down in life points and they grind a bit harder than we can when they have momentum and uh, yeah, these are the, the known traps that I have to play against. I try to go into the battle phase without fusion summoning. Basically, it's just over two barriers. GG's. Yeah, uh, this is Labyrinth sometimes. It's all good. We go on to round two. And this time we're playing against Pearly. You're going to see a Fangly Pineapple, which is a proxy to Pearly, just so you're aware. They start off with Pretty, summon the Lily, go for the My Friend, My Friend grabs i believe it was uh yeah sleepy delicious and sleepy which uh, obviously tells us a bit about their hand they go up into the beauty they go into sleepy attach then summon a pearly from deck they hit a happy memory and uh they set one they don't actually get to a noir setup uh and then the draw phase before they get a chance to draw cards book of eclipse them go for the branded fusion gets meta with an ash we have a literal god hand and call by the grave is chained we actually drew like the you know we drew the the mulchomi i believe for turn which we didn't have to use because uh, pearly doesn't really have to summon from the hand go for a mirror jade and a quem quem gets hit with an imperm which is absolutely fine i have to give them some follow-up by just attacking uh, letting them have some quick plays back from the graveyard with this setup but we have a very solid setup i believe um so i think we have branded in red set quem and mirror jade against a few quick plays i believe it is doable right they didn't have the the best setup going first anyway so they start off with happy and uh now they're able to go up into happiness which of course threatens a lot of added cards uh and uh yeah we get rid of that, we banish the happiness with the uh, Mirror Jade, just to make them run out of names, right? They don't have the trap in circulation yet, and uh, there's the second happiness. We will chain to make sure that they don't at attach the Delicious and go into Guardian Chimera, that uh, they already activated my friend this turn, so we pop the field spell and the name, and basically um, they are left with two cards in hand and a Pearly on board. They attach my Guardian Chimera, which is great. They attack. Uh, they could go into a Zeus if they want, but it's not really good against Branded. And Phasar Albion will add us a Branded loss since we have Dark Ruler and Alubur in hand. So we're going to be able to resolve that Branded Fusion with Branded loss. They don't have any cards in hand. So we know we can just swoop. And it's game one. Normal Summon Lily for game two. And it's combo time. They add the Trap, which is very interesting. They do have a lot of quick plays. They have Delicious, Pitch, Infinite Impermanence, go for a Pearly. Pearly um, hits, I believe, pretty, if I'm not mistaken. My friend grabs the field spell. They want to get greedy with uh, adding a lot of cards. Plump attaches one, set, set, and they set another one in the end phase. And I'm going to make a good play here in the draw phase. So I have in red and Albaz and High Spirits, which I dump grab another Albion and now I can go into Brandon Red. All of this is in the draw phase by the way to make sure I have a check on the trap card. They attach another two cards but they don't go into um, the trap yet. I force an Imperm if there is one so that I can make sure I can uh, chain the... now that I can chain the Borlot Savage I know that there's no, no Imperm because they would have Impermed the Albaz. Pop this, fuse with that. Uh, they do get some follow-up here. I wonder what they have set. I believe I saw that. I think it was a pretty. Yeah, I managed to get into an Albion and a Mirror Jade to threaten the board. They just start spamming out names so that, uh, you know, we can uh, we don't get to 
OTK them with enough damage. But again, we get rid of names, which is all important in this deck. Now, we try to summon Quem in the end phase. They chain Black Gold laughs to that, uh, so that, that I can't activate the effect here. But I do have a very, very original Puppet Lock play for the next turn. I have a Cartesia in hand from the end phase. And now I can start playing. Mirror Jade, dump Rindbrimmer's cost, and chain to that, summon the Albaz, banish my own Albion, pitch Cartesia for the Albaz, fuse with its Pearly to um, make the Albion. Now Quam can summon back the Cartesia here. Cartesia can activate its effect. All of this just to make sure I get a Granginyol on board, and that Granginyol can, of course, dump the Gimmick Puppet Nightmare, which now Albion the Sanctifier Dragon can target both. And the puppy lock is achieved. That was a pretty creative way. They set a few uh, quick plays to, to just survive, but you know, once the puppet lock gets going, they actually protect it from battle as well. <laughs> but there's again not a lot. Guardian Chimera, um, big big bodies on board, and we take game uh, round two, and uh, it's one one overall. Now we lose the die roll to Earth Machine, which is very cool. Shout out to the guy I was playing against. Uh, high rarity old school cards, Earth Machine. I really, really like that. And they combo off. I know some of the cards. They end on a Therion Regulus, uh, which they used to negate the branded opening, which tells me that obviously they don't really know what I'm playing. Uh, old school players, sometimes it is what it is. I still have Branded Fusion in hand. I go for the uh, Branded Lost here. Albaz, normal summon because I haven't used it with the River Stormer to make a Mirror Jade. Now I can get Branded Lost's effect. Uh, they can't respond. They have, I believe, an urgent schedule set. Now they get to summon two. And uh, what I know about this deck is they have a lot of annoying floating effects. So Mirror Jade is very good in this matchup just to make sure we banish. I, I think it's the Ruin Force and like a Infinitrack monster that they, that they summoned with the, the urgent schedule. Now, Cartesia can summon now. I fuse away to Granginyol, which I know I'm going to be able to puppet lock next turn, so I already make sure I dump the gimmick puppet nightmare, attack, banish the rune force, and uh, clear out the board, end phase, get a Quem on the board, get a courier that I can uh, use later to bring it back and get a negate, and then sanctifier under Brent lost. I grab his <laughs> theory on regulars for added emotional damage. Definitely not nice of me to do this to a player just trying to play their pet deck, but unfortunately, like, this is this is the deck choice. Draw face Mold Charmy, Perulia against Earth Machine. I draw one, I draw two. Yeah, I'm gonna draw a lot versus this deck. It's actually insane. Ruin Force, draw three. Uh, another Infinitrack monster summoned from the hand. That will be draw number four with Mold Charmy, Perulia. And they just scoop it up. They had Ash Blossom. They didn't know they can use it on Perulia. Unfortunate stuff. We go on to round three, I believe. Round four against uh, Tenpai now. Now, I lose the die roll and they make me go first. And my hand is absolute garbage. All the going second cards that you never want to see. Well, Charmy, Dark Ruler, absolutely awful. We have one kit and thankfully it resolves so we can make, again, the very small line that I like to make now when you have a normal summon only and no extension, you just make a Mirror Jade, set up for um, Branded Banishment and Dragon Lord, and of course uh, we also have the the Branded Lost. I believe I have a Retribution as well, they of course start off with Harpy's Feather Duster, and we are going to immediately try to go into Branded Banishment and they chain Forbidden Droplet, sending one Feather Duster and two Genroku, which do absolutely nothing because I mean, it's a Mirror Jade and a Lubelion, you don't really need to negate them. Now we have Dragon Lord, one mandatory negate, second mandatory negate, and it is past turn out of Tenpai. We go on to activate Branded Fusion here. We uh, It's negated because of Dragon Lord, so we use Retribution to bring it back. Now we have a Sanctifier on board. We attack for 64, end phase we get a Quem on the board to grab us a copy of Cartesia. And it's basically Puppet Lock from there and a top deck on Tenpai side, so we go up 1-0 in this round. They have full combo, and something that I didn't notice is that Genroku's quick effect attribute locks you into dragons for the rest of the turn. So this Silhouette Rabbit was illegal. They set uh, You're Finished, which is a very funny card. Read that if you want. Um, so this board is illegal, but honestly it doesn't matter because they shotgun D-Barrier. I have a hand that 
I mean, strictly loses to DBRR, can't really do anything. And the fact is, they have seals. And seals plus DBRR means that I kind of have to skip my turn. And then next turn, they have full follow up. They also make sure to bounce my only way of playing on their turn, which is Cartesia. It's basically curtains from there. We go on to siding and um, kind of fearful, but I do let him go first. So again, they try to make the Silhouette Rabbit and Seals play. They don't draw any Floodgates off of Prosperity, which is actually game saving. Um, now, because of the Silhouette illegal play, they try to commit to it, but then I point out that it's actually illegal. So they have to remain with two dragons on board. I set a Fallen of Albaz, and that's good enough to clear up three dragons into Alba Lenidus. This is why I have to play this card. Tenpai are very good this format, and you can lose a lot of games with Branded, even though it's relatively good. I toss a Chidal Dragon from hand to get rid of the Sengen Summoning uh, here off the Branded Fusion. Now I try to go into the battle phase, Sengen Kaiman, and now I have priority. They summon Gunroku from the graveyard. I immediately activate Mirror Jade to invalidate the Gunroku effect. But they do chain Forbidden Droplet, but unfortunately for them, they send the Gunroku, which is their only way of following up. My Mirror Jade is half, I crash into the green Tenpai, making sure I blow up the field in the end phase, and then I have three sets versus a top deck plus follow up. I eclipse the Fenrir immediately, just not give any value. Brand of Banishment, bring back the Mirror Jade, and it is curtains. Now, last round, we are 3 1, we go up against Fiendsmith Snake Eye. Honestly, straight up, I have to give credit to my opponent here. They played it extremely well, and they have a very good understanding of what Brandon needs to do in order to win. They are completely um, uninterrupted. I opened zero non-engine, and this game is going to be over pretty quickly, to be honest. I kind of get steamrolled here. But this is the full setup. If You, you need to open non-engine in this deck. I start off with Cartesia, go into opening to get Quem. And now Quem is negated, I can chain Cartesia to get Albion, and now I can also chain block here and get back an Albaz or a Cartesia on the board with Quem, but they chain Desiree, that negates two. We go into um, the Branded Fusion here, and we go straight into Titanic Lad to make sure we have two ways of following up, but they make a very good heads up play. SP Lil Knight banishes the Lubelion, which means my entire board is invalidated and <laughs> that is basically it i mean full snake eye fiendsmith board plus three hand traps in hand including a magnemut um and uh, we get shotgun dogwood in the draw phase of game two which is hard because the, the hand is not ideal um unfortunately fortunately for me i do have eclipse in hand to dodge the aloe this is why i like eclipse this format now i do play around ash blossom here by searching the uh, I do have a way to get to Branded Fusion from the graveyard, and in addition to that, add Cartesia to hand, but unfortunately, I kind of miscalculate my plays and I end on a very, very suboptimal board. I'm not even able to summon the Cartesia for some reason. I messed up the line somehow. I also go into Boreal Oat Furious Dragon, which again, I'm not 100% sure why I did that. I do have a Dragon Lord set up. I do have a Quem in the end phase here that will dump us uh, a copy but they also gain a lot of life points remember the dogwood they are up to 7,000 life points which means that even if we manage to hold them off and gimmick puppet them they still probably get another turn they go full thing to full uh, snake eye combo here of course um now they place the quem in the spell and trap zone i have basically one interruption they also imperm the furious in the draw phase sorry maybe i didn't know i uh, show that so just so you know it's negated this is why i don't activate it so it's basically branded banishment and a dream here they go for the moon uh, which also targets my uh, uh borrowed furious they send it with the requiem equip effect of the fiendsmith engraver and now they try to use sequentia i change Rizworm to banish the engraver did you know that Lacrima can bring back from the Banished? Yay, and so much fun. Uh, Princess now, they go into Zelantis OTK. It's actually interesting they managed to have this package in their deck. I sided out Quertus for Masquerade, and this is well, probably one reason, but not the reason. It's probably one reason I lost. Uh, Underworld Goddess doesn't really matter for me. They have the, you know, the Princess line. Now I'm able to activate Branded Banishment. I do fuse away the, um, uh, I, I do summon back the Furious and then pop the Druze Worm and the Goddess. The Druze Worm then can send, 
but they do have control on the game. I have zero cards in hand and zero follow-up because I didn't end on Mirror Jade. But thankfully I can play a bit. I managed to get to Alabaz, normal summon, fused with Ahida. I you know I, I managed to leave him with Ahida using one interruption, which is kind of nice. They summoned the Quem from my field to theirs to prevent getting damage. Again, they are on like 15,000 life point at this point, or five minutes to time. They have follow-up from Snake Ash in hand and Fiendsmith Engraver in the graveyard. Honestly, I got outplayed. Uh, this Dogwood really, really messed me up. Uh, they chain Mourner, it's their turn, so Albus will still resolve going into Albion. And this, I think, was the main misplay here. I think this is gonna be the main misplay. They, I give them an opening to, I should have stopped summoning, but I went on to use Sanctifier to summon back the Furious, which gave them an opening to summon both the Flambridge from their Spell and Trap Zone and um, the Princess as well. Kind of bad on my part, but not too much to do as well. And yeah, this has been uh, the three, two local chronicles with Branded. Again, make sure to comment down below to participate in the giveaway and let me know what deck you want me to play next week. Thank you so much for tuning in and staying up until this point. Leave a like on the video, subscribe if you like this type of content. Shout out to my opponents in this video. Be respectful, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.